Welcome to the Daily Dose. You're talking. That's fine. Go ahead, Susan. This is Robert. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. You're excited, though. I like that you're excited. Uh, oh, that would be me. <laughs> it can, and, and you know, you, you come in with energy, and I think that's one of the entrances and exits, not just in theatrical, but real yeah. life, or yeah. a real deal, and people like people who come in and light up a room. You've gotten that before, I'm sure. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be true. That'd What's be that about? True. What's that about? Um, um, my son-in-law was just accepted to uh, a program uh, to to get a degree in mental health. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he's, he's, he's so smart. He's really, really, really smart. He got like 300s on almost everything when the maximum store was 300. Wow. <laughs> but he doesn't have any background in this, in, in, in counseling. And so I was fascinated that he was accepting, you know, that he wanted to do that. And his whole future is going to be changing. He's he had a, a, a degree for a cordon a cordon bleu culinary degree, and of course it's really hard to make it in that business. And so he's been in the food industry, but not in a way that was particularly stimulating or satisfying. And he must have written some kind of great essay. And sure. yeah, this is Jesse's husband. It's crazy. It's just so exciting. That and is. That's what it is. That's, That's my, well, just really, hanging up with him. It's a big deal when, when we talk about those who we care about and those who we connect with. When they win, we win, right? We, Especially if you're their parent or their, you know, yeah. in-law parent, but it, I mean, anybody really in your life. Well, I think it's those who we feel connection with, right? I mean, there's that word again, right? And there's how many we choose to be connected to versus isolated from, right? And, you know, by choosing to be connection, we open up these pathways of empathy and, and compassion. And, you know, we feel for them. We feel with them. And, and, and you know, that doesn't just channel just the things we want. <laughs> that's that's the door I think that people oh, yeah. worry about is what are they opening themselves up to by feeling that with somebody else? Yeah, and I think that's why people stop before they start sometimes. They, they shut down because they're, they really are afraid of... Mm, having and to end up in a place where they uh, need to say things that are going to be difficult and stuff. But that's, that's what we have to do. That's how we grow. Yeah. What happens. Um, well, and, and what an interesting thing, you know, to take those, those sometimes either difficult situations um, or, or uncomfortable and, and put them in a place where you can, play with at least the emotions. I'm speaking directly to the idea of role play and improvisation in that regard, because when we go in cold to situations or go in hot to a situation emotionally, um, and you mean we're opening, yeah, yeah, we're opening ourselves up to a lot. Whereas if you have a regular practice of, Hey, I got this thing and you just, you, you play it right. And, and off you go. I mean, to have a trusted source of individuals who go, okay, I'm going to play this day and they're going to play it back to you. And it's not even just a friend, you know, X, Y, Z, maybe even better to be someone who doesn't know anything about it, but is going to just give you a, you know, a cold read on it, as it were, um, playing the emotions for you, playing the situation. Um, that's it's part the, of the power of what we do. Yeah. And then the other guy who, who has no background in, in this kind of work, um, if you're, if you're embodying this work, your yes and is pretty second nature to you, but is not much of, had doesn't have much of a role in your life and you're, and you're about collaboration and you're about communication, you're about connecting with the other guy. Even if he has no idea, he's getting the, the benefit, the positive uh, growth factor, if you will, just by us who, who do practice, uh, you know, and then and then the dynamic is influenced by that subconscious thing, and, and right. that's really been the case for me. Having done this work for a couple of years now, right? Well, when you think about your son-in-law and why maybe he went toward this, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, and we don't have to dig into the reasons, but yeah. it just you know, to, to say that perhaps if he had a good experience somewhere and said, "This is meaningful. This is speaking to me," or "I have a latent talent for this." Um, you know, when, when you hear that, I think sometimes in our lives we do, there's that phrase, you know, you missed your calling. 
You ever heard that one before? Like yeah. someone sees you doing something that is outside of your professional title or background and they go, wow, you missed your calling. <laughs> I've had that my whole life, Robert, but it's really? like I didn't become a counselor. I didn't become a therapist. Yeah. You know, everyone has felt that those were innate skills that, that I offer. And, and my answer has always been, I couldn't possibly because I want to bring everybody home. I, you know, <laughs> I'd want to take care of everybody and yeah. that, you know, there does need to be some level of professional distance. And I don't know, uh, my empathic uh, uh, gauge is way over here on this edge and I have to kind of keep it <laughs> from getting, you know, like hmm. crossing boundaries without even realizing it. It's, it's Absolutely. when you have so much compassion and so much caring and, and either have lived certain things or you you can see it and feel it and sit there with someone. Um, it, you can't, I can't be the other person, right? Not authentically, yeah. No, no. And my, my, my heart would have been that I just wanted to make it okay. And I guess my vision of how to make it okay is more time and more energy. And, and that would have been a sacrifice. Instinctively, I knew that. I can be there for my family. I can be there for my kids, my husband, right. my dogs, you know, my mom. But um, boy, at a certain point, I guess your, you know, your saturation point, the, the what is it? You know, the yeah. cup runneth over. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I then the What's that left part, sorry? Boundaries, that's boundaries. boundaries. You have to understand where you're spilling into somebody else's boundary yep. or you're not protecting yourself. You know, you're allowing too much to come in. You're sharing too much. Yeah, yeah. Hard lessons. Yeah, and, and, and for, you know, like, like we say, we talk about wanting to connect. We talk about wanting to be open and the value of those things. I think there's particular call for those things right now because we seem to be more pronounced as society as we see through, through various metrics and measures politically amongst others and financially and otherwise you know stratified and isolated uh by group siloed at that at least and so the idea is you know the empowerment comes through connection and the practical examples exist in places like as we talk about them here with the warriors or anywhere where you know teams are executing on a level above individual talent um, because they have harmonized they have you know trusted and respected and played you know uh and, and there's that word played well together so and they practice yeah it, that that's that's exactly it it's oh. not i think that's the line it's not just knowing i was i was thinking that I, i'm glad you said that it, so many times we think knowing it is enough it needs to be practice, exercise, played, whatever we want to use, you know, utilized on a regular basis, not just awareness. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's very superficial. Because when you're being tested, and I have a great example for you, when you're being tested, that's, that's, that's when it's hard, right? So if you have practiced, and it is like meditation might be an example, but yeah. exercise might be an example. Saying yes and instead of yes, but might be an example. But somebody that we we have in common, a, a, a one of the people who just finished up your day one program, had DBS surgery twelve years ago, and she uh, had the whole thing done in one day. She had both sides. She had the leads put into the battery, and the battery usually the battery is not implanted. Even implanted is a separate surgery for two to four weeks and you know the whole thing done and she anticipated before and she knew she would be awake during the surgery except for the beginning and the end and she anticipated that while she was so happy to be giving a chance at some relief from her symptoms that maybe it wasn't all going to be all that easy when she was awake and they were doing brain surgery and she had connection with someone who who was experienced in teaching self-hypnosis and so she taught her so 
our friend, entered the surgery with this gift, this tool, right, that she could call on if she needed to. And she did a few times. It didn't dominate the whole surgery experience, but it's a little peace of mind that came from, from practice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I've sought out, uh, I actually have four people, only three of whom I've talked to, but I, I have a lot of very special people in my life who are um, sensitive in that way and, and would, would be a kind of universal support when I was in that, you know, space. Um, also, for the record, um, I've decided to push off surgery for a little bit. Okay. And what does a little bit mean? Or is that indefinite at the moment? Well, it's, it, it's not that I'm not going to do it. It's, right. It's not out of fear for not wanting to do it. It's that uh, there's still some things to learn, I think, about whether to do one side or two. Uh, right. And, at once um not to be taken lightly no no and if you can avoid having two surgeries two risks of infection two risks of bleeds two risks of surgery it's just a certain you know so i'm um i'm just talking to some other neurosurgeons i mean so some neurosurgeons to try to get some more information and yeah. you know the truth is i do i'm so everything is so well controlled it's it's and the dyskinesias do show up, uh, but they don't take over my life. I adjusted my medication um, six or seven weeks ago, made a huge difference. And I'm, you know, I mean, I do rock in this chair when I'm talking to you or, you know, whenever I'm, but this is, this is, and I've noticed, I think this is so interesting. It's not about uh, a negative kind of thing. It, it's, I don't know if it's adrenaline, Robert, or whatever it is, but when I'm excited, happy, elevated mood, or anxious, scared, fearful, concerned, you know, whatever it is, the dyskinesias start mm -hmm. on both sides of that spectrum. Isn't that interesting? It's, so, it's not only interesting, it's a deeply, deeply, um, it's one of those understood but not paid attention to parts of the emotional impact of Parkinson's and and to this end, and we should probably cap. Um, I got a note from a participant today about Jimmy Choi, uh, who having an experience recently that he shared on Facebook, and uh, I encourage people I'll put the link down here to go check it out. He gave a three minute testimonial about a he basically got um, he got bullied um, in a really uh kind of you wouldn't expect an adult to do to another adult uh way God. regarding the parkinson's and oh, um goodness. it was um you know it it made him it embarrassed and angry and and he gives a very good uh talk about it and he talks about the effect on his parkinson's and um again because i know so much of our work is leading towards the emotional impact on that and i think it's so important to do so because this is so often considered, um, you know, a motor disorder, and it's like I, I'm not saying it's not that; it's just not only that. Right. And I and I want to shine more light on on the work for that reason. So, with that in mind, with you discussing that with Jimmy's link, we'll put that down there. We open it up to everybody. Your conversation on the emotional impact uh, of emotions impact on Parkinson's, and uh, maybe Parkinson's impact on emotions, right? And uh, let's see what uh, what you all have to say. Yeah. That's your daily dose.